Colorado won the toss. They defer. They would hit. And here we go. Fair catch called for and made to the end zone. <laughs> Starting lineups tonight presented by Wayfair. Braden Fowler Nicolosi, and he is a gunslinger. He really is. Last year, he had three touchdowns, 367 yards in this game, but he also had three interceptions, a couple of which were very, very costly. He told us yesterday it was only his second start last year of his career, and he didn't really appreciate it. He was so stressed out. He's certainly been appreciating it before tonight. I mean, he came flying out, and he was going out and high-fiving everybody. And that's a great sight for Colorado State. Torrey Horton, ready to go. From the 25, Fowler Nicolosi in the shotgun. And he's rolling and looking. He'll keep it and gets out of bounds. A gain of about three. This offensive line for Colorado State is veteran, and they're running the ball quite well. Well, they are, especially last week. They're led up front by their center, Jacob Gardner. This is his 48th start in college football. They've got a good group. That group has to lead the way tonight. If Colorado State wins, it's because they win up front. Justin Marshall, their redshirt freshman tailback, Went for 109 yards and 25 carries on the road against Texas. That's Horton in motion. And Marshall's first carry, and he is stuffed. Colorado's defense, very good in the secondary. In a change with Shiloh Sanders' injury, Carter Stoutmeyer gets the start. Rob Livingston, the Colorado defensive coordinator, told us it was a battlefield promotion, right? Shiloh Sanders is hurt. Stoutmeyer steps up and played very well last week against Nebraska. They're comfortable with him on the back end. Third down six. This is an air raid offense. Their offensive coordinator is Matt Mummy. The son of Hal Mummy, who designed this offense. Horton in motion. And a crossing pattern caught, but well short of the first down. Jamari Person made the catch. Trevor Woods made the stop. Well, they tried to use Horton as a decoy there. Watch Horton. Orbit motion behind the quarterback. Fowler Nicolosi looks that way. Colorado wasn't having it. Woods, Hunter, they were right there. They were not fooled by the Horton eye candy. So Jay Norvell and the Rams will have to punt. Both of these teams have dangerous return men. Lajante Webster is deep, and that's partially blocked. End over end, it lands at the 38, and that's where Colorado State will down it. So the Buffaloes putting pressure on Patty Turner, the Aussie punter. And that was partially blocked. Yeah, I think it went off his right thumb of McNeil and gives Colorado really good field position to start this game. Wayfair lineups now. We flip the card. Shadur Sanders, he is one of the most accurate passers in all of college football. When he has time, he is really fun to watch because I think they might have the best quartet of receivers in all of college football. They throw it a ton. Pat Shermer, their offensive coordinator, wants to establish the run game early. And they're going to give it to the Arkansas transfer, Isaiah Augusta. Chase Wilson with the stop, and a flag is down at the 35. Ball start. Offense. Never got set before the snap. Five yard penalty. You play first down. So I think they got the tight end, Savell Smalls, 31. You have to be set for a full count, right? You have to get set, and then it's almost 1,001. Then they can snap it. He wasn't really set before Shador Sanders called for the ball. Four receiver look, and they're all good. That one thrown behind Will Shepard, and it's incomplete. Second down and 15. Shepard set some records at Vanderbilt in the SEC, transferred this offseason. You don't see that very often. I mean, that was a really poor ball from Shador Sanders, well behind his intended target. Both quarterbacks had enormous games last year in Colorado's double overtime win. 
Second and 15, Augusta straight ahead, bounced at the 35, he'll pick up two. Boom, Jock with the stop. Now changes up front. Philip Houston gets the start at right tackle. And they bumped last week's right tackle, Tyler Brown, inside the left guard. They feel like that's his more natural position. Last week, just 4 of 14 on the road at Nebraska on third down. Michael Welch is in the backfield. Sanders has time, fires, sideline open. Wester is there, and he's out of bounds. He was open. Shador Sanders was just late with the football. Pretty good protection up front. He was able to step into the throw. Wester was right there in between the corner and the other corner in that zone coverage, but Shador Sanders' ball took him out of bounds, didn't give Wester a chance to make a play in the field. Mark Bassett, another Aussie, the transfer from Louisville, whom Deion Sanders calls mate to punt it away. And that one, not a good one at all. We'll see where the official stops. This is going to be great field position for Colorado State at the 45-yard line. This was last week. This is Torrey Horton. And this was early in the game against Northern Colorado, and a groin strain took him out of the game. They've worked on it all week. He was back to return that punt, and that's good news, right, Tiffany Blackman? We'll get to Tiffany in a moment. Colorado and Colorado State scoreless. From the 45. On the ground and this one breaks loose. This is Marshall. Inside the 40, inside the 30, down to the 28. DJ McKinney with the stop, 26 yards. Nothing fancy about that one. It's just inside zone to the right. Terrific job by both guards getting up on the linebackers. Remember, Marshall had over 100 yards rushing a couple weeks ago against Texas. This guy can run the rock. Looked like a face mask. I think they've picked the flag up. Officials conferred. And Justin Marshall... Look, this is an offensive line that was a total rebuild two years ago. They gave up 59 sacks. They couldn't run the ball. Last year, just 14 sacks, and this year, they're having success. Ballard Nicolosi just changed the play. Did that 10 or 11 times last week. Marshall, left side this time. And he's down to the 27. We go back down to Tiffany Blackman. Tiff? Hey, guys. Well, more on Tory Horton. When I spoke, spoke with Coach Jane Orell, he told us that he's just one of those amazing kids that does everything for this team. So, of course, it's a big deal for them that he is on the field right now fighting through that groin injury. Guys, I watched him warm up. Uh, he was a little bit uh, moving at a slow pace, but then picked it up. So that's a really good sign. And obviously, he's out here on the field helping to lead this team. All right. Thank you, Tiff. That was a gain of one. Second possession, Colorado State. Inside Colorado territory, Fowler Nicolosi rolling. Crossing pattern caught, that's Winfield. Knocked out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Well, if Horton's not 100%, Winfield's the guy that's going to have to step up. The Baylor transfer working against McKinney. Colorado plays almost exclusively man-to-man -man coverage. So look for Colorado State to have a lot of crossing routes like that. Try to make those corners chase them all over the field. Jay Norvell is the head coach. Matt Mummy is the offensive coordinator. But Norvell calls the plays. Marshall in the backfield. That was short of the first down. This is third and one. Marshall stays on his feet. Marshall inside the 10. To the 8. Stoutmeyer with a stop. I usually don't like gun runs on third and short because you know it's coming, but the center gardener ate up the middle linebacker. 
Hill Green, that was the key block. Marshall ended up cutting it right off the left side of the center's rear for a big first down for the Rams. It sits at the eight. And a timeout. Colorado State, their first to the half. Rams want to talk it over. Emotion spilling over from the Colorado State. Started in 1893, 70 to six, Colorado won. In 1918, the mascot, Peter the Dog, allegedly poisoned. Yikes, by Colorado fans, allegedly. Last game at Fort Collins, yeah, that's Rick Neuheisel. We'll see him at halftime. Colorado won here. It's the last time they've played here. Six in a row for Colorado, and the next scheduled matchup is until 2029. This was supposed to be played in 2020. COVID canceled it, and here we are with Colorado State on the move. First and goal. Scoreless in the first. Justin Marshall in the backfield. And this is Marshall hit off the edge by Preston Hodge, who came up from the nickel spot. Good call there by Rob Livingston, the D coordinator. Watch the right side of your screen. The nickel Hodge 24 is going to come right in there. The receiver, Winfield, not able to block him. That's an excellent call. You're expecting run to the left. Have the nickel come and fire unblocked. Second and goal. Just outside the seven. Bad snap. And Fowler Nicolosi falls on it. And this is going to set up third and goal from the 14. I think it just came early. It was a good snap. Fowler Nicolosi just wasn't ready for it. Hits him right in the hands. It just didn't look like he was quite expecting it at that point from Gardner. Let's see if Colorado brings some heat. Third and goal at the 14. They bring four. Steps up to the 10. And that's as far as he'll get right around the seven. Shane Cox made the stop. And the field goal unit is coming on for Colorado State. Not sure really what Fowler Nicolosi thought was going to happen there. I mean, he wasn't close to getting a touchdown. I know he doesn't want to turn the football over, but he could have bought a little bit more time and then tried to find a receiver. There was no way he was going to get in there for a touchdown. Second oldest player in college football, Jordan Noyes, is 32. He has three kids. He's from England. He didn't see an American football game until just a few years ago. The snap is good and the kick is good. And the Rams are on the board first. Jordan. Sanders will point out that I just showed my team the video. That's all I had to do. Yeah, I didn't, he said, I didn't say anything. Just showed the team. We saw this before the game. Jay Norvell. Jason Phillips from the Colorado staff. There were no hijinks other than that in pregame warmups. Crowd was bouncing. You don't often see it between coaches, though. You know what I mean? I mean, that was not a pleasant conversation. Usually that's more the 19 and 20 year olds, not the grown ups. From the 25, Sanders to the air. Has plenty of time, fires, has a man, flag is down. That's Travis Hunter. And he's down after a gain of nine at the 34. Jonathan Noli, our referee, out of the Mountain West. Offside, defense, number 91. Lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalties decline. Second down. So second and one. 
This is the type of down that if you had confidence in your ability to run the football, it'd be a great play to take a shot or try to get a chunk play. I'm not sure Colorado has that confidence. They'll run it. That's Welch, and Welch is across midfield. Knocked out of bounds. One. He just bounced it outside. This would be huge for Colorado if they can run the ball like this. Seaton, the true freshman left tackle, was able to seal the edge. Terrific block downfield from Will Shepard. Colorado didn't want to wait till third down. They said, let's try to get the first down now, and they got a whole lot more. That's a great sign for Colorado. They haven't had a rushing touchdown yet this year. 45 carries, 75 yards in their first two games. Sanders again with time and a target with Will Shepard, who makes the catch right at the 36-yard line. Not a, a ton of speed in the backfield defensively for Colorado State, but they've got guys who can hit, including Henry Blackburn. Well, both their safeties are big hitters, and I think most people watch and remember the hit that Blackburn put on Travis Hunter last year in this game. Caused internal injuries. Hunter actually ended up missing three ball games after that. Second down five. Sanders a quick pop. That's Hunter in space. And Hunter's got ten flags to come in after the tackle. Henry Blackburn on the stop. Of course, the postscript to that hit was both Blackburn and Hunter got together, attended some charity events together. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 54. 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. And here's that hit you talked about. Well, it was egregious, right? I mean, it, it was very late. Hunter obviously wasn't ready for it. It was flagged as it should have been. But then Blackburn got thousands, and I'm not exaggerating, thousands of death threats really became a really ugly situation on social media. Credit to Travis Hunter for having Blackburn come down to campus. They filmed a video on YouTube making sure everybody knew that those guys were okay with each other. Second down and 11. Welch again, and already Colorado has more rushing yards than they had last week at Nebraska. They had just 16 last week. Dominic Morris with the stop, and the, the chatter is starting to heat up. Watch the left side of the line. Jordan Seaton, 77. They pinch. He gets up on the next level. That is twice where the Buffs have been able to get to the left flank against Colorado State. They have found something there. Colorado State better fix that quick. Third down two. Play action. Sanders with time, little crossing pattern. Jimmy Horn Jr. first down to the 28. I mean, they wanted to establish the run early, and they've done it. Made some offensive line changes. They got a new running back in there, and the true freshman Welch, and so far so good. And you know what happens then, Rich? It's easier to throw the ball. You know, the pass protection so far for Shador Sanders has been on point. And this secondary for Colorado State, they are not good enough to stay with these receivers if Sanders has time. Now Isaiah Augusta in the backfield. Sanders has been sacked 55 times going back to last year. And this is Horn coming around the bend. And he's caught by Chase Wilson. The senior captain and leader. Wilson's going to come from the right side of your screen. He read it all the way. He saw Horn coming in that jet motion and said, I've seen this movie before. Terrific play by the senior middle linebacker. Second leading tackler last year. This is a veteran group, especially with the safeties and linebackers. Second down, 15. Blitz comes, Sanders, time, crossing route, Shepard the catch, caught from behind. Jack Howell, two-time first-team Mountain West pick, gain of eight. Colorado State playing a soft zone, Shepard 14 from the left side of your screen. Just a shallow cross, and Howell, if he doesn't make that tackle, Shepard gets the first down. Still puts the buffs in a third 
and about eight. And that's something Pat Shermer told us in our meetings yesterday. That takes heat off a quarterback, a quick hitter, and they've thrown with success on a few of them. No pressure yet from Colorado State in this game with a four-man rush. Let's see if they bring an extra guy. But in seven, they do. Sanders flushed, fires. Incomplete. Shepard the reach. Elias Larry there on coverage. Watch Sanders drift to his left. You see this a lot actually on tape where he's not really setting his feet, but that's a perfect throw. I mean, that is a beautiful throw. I think Shepard will tell you he should have caught it. The Colorado sideline wanted pass interference on Larry. Decent amount of contact there, but so far they're letting the guys play. Alejandro Mata from 44. He came from Jackson State with Dion. And he kicks it very low. Had one block last week against Nebraska. This one is wide right. The Rams defense holds. Missed field goal from Cup in the Mountain West. Mountain West Commissioner Gloria Navarre said in part, our board of directors meeting to determine our next steps. The Mountain West, a proud 25-year history, will continue to thrive in the years ahead. And we asked in our meetings Jay Norvell about the move to the Pac-12, and, and he said this, look, I congratulated our team and our staff. They're part of this move. He said, but it doesn't change our goals for this season. And he said, it, it certainly doesn't change our goals for tonight against Colorado. So you tell me right now we have a game between a team that was in the Pac-12 last year and a team that'll be in the Pac-12 in two years, but neither one of them are in the Pac-12 right now? No, and, and Col <laughs> Colorado's in the Big 12, but they haven't played a Big 12 game yet. <laughs> Play action, Fowler Nicolosi gets to the edge, gets to the sideline. Did he get the first down? I don't think so. See where they mark him. It's going to be short by a couple yards. His legs are going to be a big factor tonight because of the fact that Colorado runs so much man coverage. When all of the guys on defense are running with a receiver, they're not looking at the quarterback. So if there's a seam, Fowler Nicolosi is going to take it. Robert Livingston, one of the bright young minds in the NFL, jumped at the chance to be a coordinator here in Colorado with a coaching staff that is filled with NFL players and NFL coaches. Movement in flags. Well, Colorado was coming with a blitz. Levante Bentley, the linebacker, and it caused one of the offensive linemen on the left side to flinch. Offside. Defense. Ooh. Number 95. In the neutral zone, causing a reaction. Five yard penalty results in a first down. Well, the Colorado defensive line fooled me. Let's watch him right here. I thought maybe when he and Bentley moved, one of the linemen moved. They pointed, they were pointing at the left guard, Foster. All the Colorado defenders were clapping. They were happy. They thought they got a free five yards. Here's a look at Livingston. Nine years with the Bengals. Little trickery. Back to Fowler Nicolosi. Looks downfield. He'll keep it. And he'll get out of bounds. Well covered down the field by Colorado. little razzle-dazzle here early in the game, but the Buffs weren't having it. Not only did they get pressure, but everything was well covered down the field. Last year, as you can see, Fowler Nicolosi might have just thrown this up in the air, thrown it up for grabs. This is the maturity of being a second-year starter. Just take a positive play. Don't take any chances with turning the ball over. Final 30 seconds of this first quarter. With Colorado State trying to run the football, Justin Marshall is popped by Levante Bentley. <laughs> that is what Levante Bentley does. The Clemson transfer. 
He is a downhill run thumper. He's going to come out now on third and seven. My guess is Colorado State will just take this to the quarter. We talked about explosive offenses. We talked about last year and all the points in the double overtime thriller. So guess what? After one in this Rocky Mountain showdown, 3-0 Colorado State. Moments ago, Tiffany Blackman down below with Rams head coach Jay Norvell. Coach Norvell, you guys tried some trickery there. How do you like the way this offense is moving? Uh, I, you know, we're doing a good job up front with our offensive line. Uh, we just got to continue to finish drives, convert on third down, but I like what we're seeing so far. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, thank you. Partner, they really haven't targeted their biggest weapon, Torrey Horton. And that's a question mark as to, to how he's running, how the routes are, and how he feels. It's a great point. You know, he might be out there as a decoy as much as anything else. You have to be very careful with those soft tissue injuries. Those things can get re-aggravated at any point. Right now, there's nobody covering him. They're down seven. They bring Stoutmeyer, the safety, over him. That's who I'm looking. If I'm Fowler Nicolosi, 14 to the left. Four-man rush. Fires to the sideline for Horton, and it's over his head. And Stoutmeyer was with him most of the way. So this has to be a completion, right? You got one of the best receivers in the country at the top of the screen. He's running an out route there against the safety, and Fowler Nicolosi, that ball just sailed on him. He did not give Horton a chance to make a play. You can see Horton is frustrated. You don't get many opportunities like that with one of the best wide receivers in the country in man-to-man -man coverage against the safety. You gotta cash in, especially on a third down like that. Patty Turner to punt. His last punt was partially blocked. LeJante Wester is deep. And the Aussie gives that rugby-style kick. Good bounce for Colorado State. It's inside. The 10 and down to the 8. And a timeout. Two to nothing, shellacking. But then they beat Michigan by 20 points, so maybe Texas is just that good. Maybe it's not a reflection of Colorado State at all. All right. How does Shadur Standers in Colorado get engaged here and get it down the field to guys like Travis Hunter? That's a gain of only one. Gabe Kershke made the stop. Well, and this is what Colorado struggled with. Watch the stunt here. The tackle goes up, the end loops around, and nobody picks him up. They call this a TE. Tackle up the field, end loops. Kershke's right there to make the tackle. Colorado struggled with that last week against Nebraska, and I saw them in Boulder on Wednesday at practice. They went over and over and over that. Rich is still not able to get picked up. Second and nine. Sanders is flushed. Scrambling to the 10 and a slide there. Not much of a gain. It's where the slide starts. So the ball is marked back at the 10. Still not that much pressure. They did a decent job blocking it up. I think sometimes Sanders leaves a little bit prematurely. He has a little bit more time in the pocket. But I think he's so used to being under duress and what happened last week he doesn't feel like hanging out but now it's third and long again Colorado State is showing pressure wouldn't be surprised if they back out of it watch the linebackers all two on third Sanders crossing pattern caught and dropped that's Timmons swallowed up by Elias Larry the transfer from Navy another shallow crossing route by Colorado on third and long Sanders is able to make the throw, but Colorado State's all over it. If you keep getting in third and longs like this, they're going to let you catch those passes underneath and go ahead and make the tackle. Mark Vassett to punt. He shanked one his first attempt. And again, Torrey Horton is back to return this punt. Now you got two guys back there as well. And this is Horton backing up. He took one for a touchdown last week. Horton, good move, spins away. And a solid return out to the 49-yard line. Colorado State with the lead, with the ball at midfield. 3-0 Colorado State. This was last week, Torrey Horton on a punt return. Just look how explosive he is and the moves he's able to make. He's a long strider. 
And he actually looked a little bit like that on the punt return that he just had. I I'll tell you this much, he's not a decoy. I mean, I know he only has one target so far, but they would not be having him return punts like that if he was out here tonight just to be a decoy. He looks to me like he is, I don't know if he's 100%, but he's certainly ready to roll. First and 10, Colorado State from their 48 big hit on the edge and we check in with Tiffany Blackman. Hey Rich, well Ross mentioned that Horton looked explosive and a big reason for that as Jay Norvell told us in our meeting is that he got stronger coming into this season that he put on about 12 pounds. A lot of that has to do with his aspirations to go pro and guys we know he stayed here because he wanted to get that coaching to try to reach the next level. Oh and you know what look he started his career at Nevada down is the running back Justin Marshall and while well, they tend to watch today that's Justin Marshall coming off and let's take another look at this hit well it was a great tackle by the linebacker Nakai Hill Green he wraps up and watch the right side Levante Bentley Ooh, that's that's the top of his helmet be curious to see whether or not they stop it and take a look at that Marshall's not a defenseless player so it's only potential targeting if you make forceful contact with the crown of your helmet and they are not reviewing it or at least not stopping it keegan hollis in a tailback blitz comes and all of a sudden a procedure call Ball start offense number two five yard penalty Remain second down. Gene Steratore is with us gene we just watched that hit not the first man but the second guy in what did you see yeah, Rich, and, I, and, and Ross is right. I think there is contact with Bentley's crown, the six-inch diameter from the top of his helmet. But what you're looking at, I think, as an indicator and possibly I would think why they didn't initiate a review is, yes, he's making contact there, but it's got to be forcible contact initiated by that defender. To me, I think Bentley crouches anticipating it. He's moving forward, but it's rather subtle and not initiating it with force with the crown, and I would think that's why they stayed away from the target. Thank you, Gene. Fowler, Nick. Nicolosi deep and Caleb Goody in the pattern was overthrown Travis Hunter a rare target Travis Hunter's way that doesn't happen very often especially trying to take Hunter deep Fowler Nicolosi puts it up there and Hunter as usual all over him right up to the challenge I mean the guy is just unbelievable I think you can make a strong argument he's the best receiver in college football. I think you can make another argument he might be the best corner in college football. So I'll make the argument, how does he not win the Heisman? Just the seventh target, and this is game three. Right, and that's why they don't do it. <laughs> I mean, if you target him, he's probably going to make the play. They're down 14. Tyler Nicolosi wandering right, throwing across the middle, and it's incomplete. Just out of the reach. Winfield had it on his hands for an instant. Got to make that play. That's two third downs in a row where Colorado State had a very makeable play. Terrific job by Fowler Nicolosi to buy time. The ball's a little bit high. But Winfield has to make that catch. You're trying to beat a more talented team. You're the underdog. That's two third downs in a row that the Rams should have been able to convert. Patty Turner, end over end kick. Wester is back there, and he makes the fair catch at the 14. In four if we want to just make the award one of the best quarterbacks on one of the best teams, then one of those other guys will win it. But I think most people would agree he's the best player playing college football these days. He has two catches, and he's got, oh, a drop. That doesn't happen very often. Is that an announcer jinx right there? He seemed to spit on his hand there to try to get the gloves a little bit stickier. I'm just talking him up. He's right here at the bottom, going to run an in-breaking route. Decent coverage, actually, by the zone, but it's right there in between the zone. I think he heard footsteps a little bit there from Chase Wilson, number 30. He knew he was about to take a hit. Augusta in the backfield, shotgun blitz comes, quick throw, Hunter the catch this time, and he's blasted by Asissima, the graduate transfer from Nevada. Thought it was interesting talking with Coach Prime yesterday, just a little quick out route. 
But give Colorado State a lot of credit for their tackling of Hunter so far. We asked Coach Prime if he thought Hunter should win the Heisman. He said the only way he won't is because I'm his coach. They're down five. Shadour with time. Middle shot. Caught there at the 35. Wester, who's the active leading receiver in the NCAA with 262 catches. Watch Shador Sanders here. Boom Jock number eight is right in his face. One of my favorite things about Sanders, he is calm under pressure. He will still deliver that football with accuracy, even with a guy right up in his face. To be honest with you, he's kind of used to it. It's happened a lot the last couple years. 17 yards on that hookup. Little sidearm throw. That's a nice improv. Hunter makes the grab, and he's out of bounds. Out at the 41-yard line. <laughs> Those guys are actually talking to each other because they weren't on the same page. Shador Sanders just walked over to Travis Hunter. A lot of times they call that a look pass, Rich, meaning if you have a receiver that you like and the corner is playing off coverage, based on the look, just throwing the ball right away and let him make a move and maybe get a bunch of yards. Colorado has missed a field goal in this game, and this is Augusta who kind of blossomed at the end of last year with two starts for Arkansas. And they're turning to him to spark this running game. Only five guys in the front right there for Colorado State. They're basically daring Colorado to run the football. I mean, think about it. Colorado has five blockers on the offensive line. Colorado State only has five defenders. That math doesn't work. I mean, none, they're going to be able to get a hat on a hat and the running back should be able to get a nice game. Play action, company in the backfield, Hunter's hit. Caught it, dropped, Aiden Hector. Well, and Sanders had to get rid of it right away because of the pressure from Mitchell. Mitchell's just gonna come up the field and get penetration. That's one where the right guard, Benson, he's gotta help out his tackle. Houston a little bit more than that. He just hung the right tackle out to dry. That's almost an impossible block for the right tackle, Houston, if the right guard doesn't give him any love on the D tackle. It's a loss of three. Second and 13. Four-man rush. Pocket collapsing. Sanders scrambling. And firing down the field for Horn. And it's over his head. There's a flag down. Backwards is down. At the 33. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 55. It's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Well, that is an obvious penalty and not very smart at all by Andrew Lorick, and quite frankly, they should look at that. That's a hit to the head or neck area of a defenseless player, a quarterback throwing the ball. That's another one. Maybe we can bring Gino on. Look, I'm not, I'm not the type of guy. I'm not looking to get any of these kids kicked out of the game. I like when these kids are in the game, but you think that would be another one that they might consider taking a look at. Just outside the 41, Colorado on the move. Sanders to throw. Little screen pass, and that's Michael Welch with the catch. And he's down to the 31. I think he's got the first down. Let's bring in Gene Steratore. Gene, does it make a difference well, there because yeah. Sanders was outside of the pocket? Yeah, but once he makes that throw, I think within that step, uh, he definitely, Ross, to me, feels defenseless. And you can see that that is now that's forcible contact to the head neck area. You can see uh, you can see Sanders' head go back quick. I agree with you. You look at that, and I would have supported a targeting foul on that play. All right, thank you, Gene. Second and short. Tremendous catch. Will Shepard, long, lanky, one of Vandy's all-time receivers. That's a tremendous catch. I mean, look at that by Shepard. He's another guy that's a future pro. I don't know another program in the country that has number three and number four receivers like the Colorado Buffaloes. Yeah, maybe the best foursome in college football. Welch bounces it outside. 
Chase Wilson makes the stop down to Tiffany Blackman. Well, you guys are seeing the leadership of Shador Sanders as he takes this team down the field. And that's what we talked with LeJounte Wester, the receiver, about. He told me that Shador is who they say he is. He's not being talked about as being a number one quarterback for no reason. He called him a coach on the field and a leader off of it, guys. Well, he's moving the football. Thank you, Tiff. Sanders on this drive. He's 6 of 7 for 38 yards. Second and 10. Sanders with time. Man wide open on the sidelines. That's Shepard again. They are giving the secondary of Colorado State a lot of room to these receivers. Shador Sanders is in a groove right now. Freddie Banks, the Colorado State D coordinator, he came with a zone blitz there. They brought two linebackers, but actually dropped two of the D linemen in the zone. Sanders was not fooled forward at all, fooled by it at all. And they better find a way to get pressure on Sanders, which he's going to keep picking them apart. He's too good. First and ten, Colorado State 16. Sanders again, another quick throw. That's Hunter with the catch. Hunter escapes to the five and knocked out of bounds. How does he do that? I, I just don't understand how these guys stop in an instant like that. 12-yard gain. Watch him. Watch right after he catches it. In the air, he stops and goes the other way. That is so impressive to me. He's running inside, jumps in the air, and when he lands, he goes back the other direction. Sanders, end zone, caught! Touchdown, Wester! Colorado takes the lead. Just a quick slant route to Wester. I think the safety, Blackburn, was a little bit late to get over there. Sanders looked to the right, which held Blackburn for just enough that he could fire it back for the toddy. I mean, LeJounte Wester is one of the top receivers in the NCAA, and he's like number three on the target list for Shadur Sanders. Seven three, Colorado. Shadur Sanders, brilliant. Nine of ten, 64 yards on an 81 yard drive, 12 plays. That is Chase Feely. I'm sure Dad is watching. <laughs> Part of our NFL coverage. Kobe Johnson's going to bring it out. And Kobe Johnson plows his way across the 20. Time to do Project Smarter, presented by Home Depot. One of the ways Colorado State does it smarter is by Fowler Nicolosi changing the plays. He actually changed 11 passes to runs last week because he thought it was what was best for the team. I know a bunch of quarterbacks, Rich, that probably would not do that, but they've had some success with some of his checks to the run game. They did tell us, though, yesterday they think he's more likely tonight to check from a run to a pass because of all the man coverage Colorado plays. At the 21, Fowler Nicolosi, handoff there. And Hollis, a strong second effort out to the 28-yard line. Hollis is another guy they like, the sophomore, and he's a local kid. Just an unbelievable story. I mean, he tore his ACL his senior year of high school, so that ruined any potential recruiting. Ended up walking on here at Colorado State, earns a scholarship, and then last spring tore the same ACL again. So for him to get all the way back to now he's playing in the Rocky Mountain Showdown says a lot about him. He's hit and planted. That's another nice stop by Nakai Hill Green. That's two for Hill Green, and this is a bad angle. They're going to try to have the center, Gardner, get up on Hill Green on a run to the right. That's just not going to work out very well. He just has a bad angle to be able to get up on Hill Green, who made yet another rock'em, sock'em tackle. 
It's going to be a third down and five. The last two third downs for Colorado State, they've had open receivers, and they haven't been able to connect. They've got to convert on some of these. One of five so far tonight. Blitz comes. Fowler Nicolosi, another cross, caught, but short of the first down. Torrey Horton had the catch. Travis Hunter in pursuit brought him down. Not a big fan of that play call and or decision. You're running a shallow cross two yards down the field against maybe the best corner in college football. Three yards short of the line to gain. I think Colorado State would have been better served looking elsewhere or having Horton run a different route. Patty Turner. It's fourth and three. Timeout, Colorado. Their first of the half. Colorado, Colorado the has to burn a timeout. Bots of the NFL, but Robert Livingston is the really impressive one in our meetings yesterday. Is a guy that cut his teeth with the Bengals. A whistle. Before the snap, false start. Offense number 20. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Livingston was a, a defensive back coach for the Bengals. Marvin Lewis, Mike Zimmer, Clock guys. That, please set the game clock to 343, please. That helped guide him, and he aced the interview with Dion. He was impressive in our interview yesterday. Yeah, there's Warren Sapp on the sideline. Had a chance to talk to Sapp before the game. This is his first time coaching, and he's loving it. He said, I am hooked, Ross. Turner, it's a line drive, and that's over the head of Wester. It's rolling and rolling and rolling. Wester picks it up, and he's swallowed up at the 15. Wow. That's a 62-yard missile from Patty Turner. Let's take a look at that last drive for the Buffs. Shador Sanders starting to get in a little bit of a rhythm here, especially when his line gives him time. Colorado State's going to have to change up something defensively here to get pressure on Sanders because you see that last drive. You cannot let him get in a groove like this. He's too accurate. Sacked six times last week. Sacked 48 times last year. That's a lot. 55 sacks since the beginning of last year. Second most in the NCAA. Three and a half left first half. Michael Welch. You could hear that one up here. He bounced off it, though. He's going to end up losing three yards. That was a collision with the corner, Elias Larry. He's going to come from the right side of your screen. You don't see him yet, so you guys can run it. And you'll see number three come fly. Watch this collision. Wow. I mean, and Welch stayed up. I don't know how you stay up when you take a hit like that. Second down at 13. Colorado State has two timeouts. Colorado has two over the middle. And it was intended for Will Shepard. He stopped. Shepard stopped his route. I'm not exactly sure why. And you can see Sanders talking to him. Sanders threw the crossing route, and Shepard just stopped in the middle of the route. Brings up third and real long. You have to think here, Rich. Soft zone coverage from Colorado State. Make the buffs throw it underneath, rally the ball, and make the tackle get off the field. If Colorado State can get a stop, remember, time they out. have... Colorado State, that's their second time out of the half. I was just about to say. <laughs> now they've got one. They're down 13. Colorado backed up in their end at the 13-yard line. Colorado State showing that three-deep zone that they like to major in. Sanders steps into the pocket, fires over the middle, caught there. It's Hunter. Hunter has the first down. And he is stopped at the 31-yard line. 19 yards. I'm fine with the zone coverage from the Rams. I'm not fine with only rushing three. They only rush three guys. Shador Sanders has way too much time. I mean, he's eventually going to find an open receiver. If you give him that much time, Hunter knows exactly where to sit down against that zone coverage, and he's wide open. That should never happen where number 12 catches the ball with no green within five yards of him. 
Remember the two minute timeout is right around the bend. Long throw and Hunter knew where the sideline was as he was backpedaling and got the feet down. Colorado still has those two timeouts. That's a long throw in college football. From the left hash all the way to the right sideline. He got two feet in. He's ready for the next level. <laughs> Hops out. Four minutes of the second. And Colorado is poised to do that. Well, they get the ball to start the second half. So, real opportunity here for a double dip. Feels like a huge drive here. Really for both squads. Colorado State has got to find a way to get a stop here. Sanders is 18 of 23. Michael Welch left side. Flag follows him into the line. Dominic Morris, the hit and the stop for Colorado State. Holding. Offense number 77. 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. That was the number one ranked left tackle in high school football last year, Seton. Let's watch him. He's going to be right at the point of attack. He's doing good so far, doing good there, right there, right? Right when they, uh, Wakalonji tried to separate, Seton's got to know to let go. That was a really good initial block by him, but you kind of got to know when you got to let go there. And he's a young player that just learned a lesson. One key stat in this game, in Colorado's favor, no sacks allowed. That's a big, big penalty there. And they had second and one, where you think they're almost a lock to get the first down. Now, Colorado State might be able to get the ball back here if they can get a couple stops. Sanders, four-man rush. Pocket collapses. He escapes. Flag is down. Throw is caught at the 37. But it feels like this is coming back. Oh. Like Michael Welch out on the pattern. It's definitely coming back, and it's another hold against this Colorado offensive line. Holding. Offense number 54. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. So it's the new starter at right tackle, Phil Houston. He's going against Gabe Kirschke right there. Watch 58 with the move here. It's just speed to power. Woo he knocked him back. Houston was hopping on a leg like that. And because of that, he ended up holding him. That is a tough block for an offensive lineman when a guy goes speed to power like that. You see all the new faces on Colorado's offensive line. They've done a nice job so far tonight until those back-to-back -back holds. Now Colorado State should absolutely get the ball back. Michael Welch, another flag is down, and Welch spins. That's a sizable gain out to the 37-yard line, but the flag is back at the... 21. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 91. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. It's an automatic first down. That's enormous because it's added to the end of what was a really nice run by Michael Welch. Devastating. Absolutely devastating against the Rams. You have them in second and forever. And for them to just run a zone run to the left. Watch Mitchell right there in the middle of your screen. He got the face mask of Benson. Boy, that wasn't real long that he had it, but they saw it. Sanders sets up, fires, deep left side. It is incomplete. Shepard almost had it. Elias Larry in coverage. Elias Larry's having himself a half. The Navy transfer a corner. He was stride for stride with Shepard going down the sideline. Really a pretty ball there from Shador Sanders. I mean, he really is tremendously accurate. That's one Shepard will probably tell you he should make that play. He wants to play at the next level. He's got to haul that one in. Second down and 10. Target line is at right about the 35-yard line, and you can choose from Alejandro Mata and Jace Feely. Feely has a, a stronger leg. 
Sanders over the middle. Oh, big crunching hit. Jimmy Horn Jr. somehow holds on, and that's a first down. Jimmy Horn Jr. is not a big guy, but he is courageous. Watch this. Wow. And he bobbled it, but still held on. First to 10, going quickly here. Sanders backpedaling, fires just over the hand of Horn on a deep crossing route. Second and 10, a minute five left in this first half. That's an overthrow there by Sanders. He threw it off his back foot. Jimmy Horn Jr. was wide open. That's one critique I definitely have of Shador Sanders. Sometimes he takes too many sacks, and too often he's throwing off his back foot or off platform when he doesn't have to. Colorado has two timeouts left. Sanders fires. Got a man. Wester. He's five. He's touchdown. Colorado. 34 yards. Too much time for Sanders and too much speed for this Colorado State secondary. If he has this much time to just sit there and step into the throw against this zone coverage, these speedy receivers running right in between the second and third levels of the defense wide open. And again, we talk about the middle eight, the last four of the first half, the first four of the second half. Colorado scores. They get the ball to start the second half. Deion Sanders and Colorado flexing here. What do you mean the connecting rooms were not confirmed? Exactly, not confirmed. But they're super close, though. There's just a courtyard in between them. Well, actually, it's an alley, but nobody lives in it anymore, so that's cool. Go ahead and lock the door. What? When you want your kids in a room that's actually connecting, lock the door. Why would I lock the door? It matters where you stay. Hilton for the stay. Colorado down 3-0. Remember, they had missed a field goal, and Shadur Sanders engineering two long touchdown drives this last one 84 yards on nine plays. It would be hard to overstate just how significant that penalty was against Mitchell for the face mask. After Colorado's offensive line had back-to-back -back holds, the Rams had a great opportunity to get off the field that they weren't able to do. Kobe Johnson is going to bring it out reluctantly. Reverses course and not a great return. Out to the 13-yard line. Coming up, Geico Halftime Report. Adam, Aaron, Rick, and BJ break down the first half and catch you up on the best week three highlights. And now because they called a couple of timeouts earlier, Colorado State only has one timeout. So they're going to have to really drive the ball down the field and get the ball to the perimeter and try to get out of bounds. If you're Colorado... Your corner should be playing outside leverage, meaning outside of the receivers they're covering so that you don't let them get out of bounds after they catch the football. And always know where Torrey Horton is at all times. Yikes. Colorado State. is going to be now inside their own 10. They had 18 penalties in this game last year, and it really cost them the game. And so far, some of these penalties tonight are costing them dearly again. Five now, tonight. Now you got to really be careful if you're Fowler Nicolosi. Now it kind of swings from wanting to try to score points to making sure you don't give the ball back to Colorado or make a foolish decision. Just the one timeout. He'll throw it from the goal line. Fires to the sideline. It's caught. 
That's Jamari Person. But it's back to the original line of scrimmage, and the clock is rolling. Excellent tackle there by McKinney. That's exactly what I just talked about. Stay outside of them. Don't let them get it out of bounds. The clock just keeps on moving. Second and ten. Colorado brings four. Fowler Nicolosi steps through it. Fires on the run, has a man out across the 30. That's Horton. Clock stops. They'll move the chains. And Colorado State has to work quickly, down to 21 seconds. They need to get on the ball right now because as soon as they set the chains, the clock will start moving again. They need to save that timeout. Clock starts. Too much time here. Ball snapped at 15 seconds left. Fowler Nicolosi flushed, getting to the sideline, and he escapes. But look at all the time that's gone off. There's just eight seconds left. Well, they they took six seconds before they snapped the ball. They had a first down. The clock was stopped. You cannot wait six seconds in that situation before you actually snap the ball. Now they're going to try to get a chunk play down the field and then use a timeout. And Horton came off limping. Groin strain last week, didn't practice a lot this week, has played in this game, but has not been effective. Second and nine. Fowler Nicolosi fires it down the sideline. Winfield, and it's incomplete. Two seconds left, and the news just gets worse for Colorado State. This was after he made that catch. You said earlier in the game, sometimes those soft tissue injuries can get aggravated. It certainly looks like Horton's did on that catch he made. Third and nine, two ticks left on the clock. Prevent defense, certainly. Make sure you don't throw an interception to number 12, that's for sure. <laughs> that's a good point. Little inside screen to Goody. And Goody up the field has the first down. Flags down. That could extend the half. Well, I think if it's, gonna be it's a defensive penalty. Yeah, I think it'll be an illegal block. It would be my guess by Colorado State downfield. I don't know what the penalty could have been on the defense there at that point in the play. Colorado is starting to walk towards their locker room. Oh! Now, wait a minute. Did he point? He pointed in Colorado's direction. I think there's some confusion out there. I think he pointed in the wrong direction. I think the penalty was on Colorado State. No, I, you know, I, well, I, was, I, I was watching the side judge. Oh, and he said illegal low block on 12 white. All right. It is on Colorado, and it stops the clock, and it brings the football to the 34-yard line. Now they've got a shot to throw it in the end zone. And obviously the official's microphone is not working. I saw number 10, the tight end, Vince Brown, and Travis Hunter get tied up towards the end of that previous play to Goody. And at first glance, I thought maybe it was a block in the pack by Brown. Watch 10 at the top of your screen. Top right of your screen, watch number 10, Brown. Oh, yeah, you know what? Hunter went low on him. You're not allowed to do that. You can only go low within a yard of the line of scrimmage in the tackle box. That's a terrific job by the officials to see that. It was in front of the Colorado bench, and they started to walk to the locker room. All I saw was Hunter on the ground and Brown on top of him, and I assumed it was a block in the back by Brown. And the penalty is enough to give Colorado State a shot at a long field goal, a 52-yarder. We are at altitude, and there is no wind. And the kick is badly missed. And that sums up the sequence of events for Colorado State. Costly penalty. Two touchdowns by Los, who were down early in this game. Remember last year, 
It was Colorado State on the road in Boulder. They had the lead. Colorado was down. And they rallied for that double overtime win. We check in with Tiffany Blackman. Tiff? Hey, guys. For Colorado State, we saw receiver Tori Horton leave the field kind of gingerly going into half. Remember, he's dealing with a groin injury. Well, I saw him come back out. He got on the bike. And when I spoke with Coach Jay Norvell and asked about his status, he told me, hey, he's been sore for two weeks. He's doing his best just to battle through it, guys. And so he's going to try to tough it out for his team today. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. Colorado State needs something positive to happen. Uh, they need to get this crowd back in it. This is one of the best stadiums I've been at in college football. Electric atmosphere. They got to get the student body back in it by making a play. On the ground, Augusta. And that ground game continues. You saw how happy Deion Sanders was going into half with the fact that they were able to move the sticks on the ground. And there's an injury. A Colorado State player looks like James Mitchell down. And he's being helped off the field. Well, that would be a big loss because Mitchell's probably their best defensive tackle. And they haven't been able to get a lot of pressure up the middle. And as we've seen, Colorado is running it more effectively, really, than they have in the last two years. 45 carries and 75 yards on the ground in the first two games this year. Straight ahead, and that's a first down. All the way out across the 40 to the 43. And that's Augusta. This is a, a really talented back and just a sophomore, the transfer from Arkansas. Watch this block by Benson, the right guard. He's just going to knock Lawrence back. Look at him. I mean, just get him out of there. That is not easy to just knock a defensive tackle back. And Lawrence is in there because Mitchell's out. From the 42 flags and whistles. Before the snap, false start. Offense number 56. Five yard penalty remains first down. Tyler Brown, who moved from tackle to left guard. Must have been right before that because I didn't see anything there, but Cam Baratow, number 50, 94, pointed it out right away. Looks back to the 37. A gust of in motion, Sanders throw, Horn with the catch, and Jimmy Horn Jr., who last year in this matchup had seven catches and a touchdown. And he's one of the weapons that Pat Shermer, who's in his second year here at Colorado, has at his disposal. Four just dynamite wide receivers. Sanders fires it out. It's off the hands of Horn. Horn is 5'10. And that pass was uh, out of his reach. Third yeah, down way, seven. Way too high there by Shador Sanders on the move. Horn really had no chance. Would have had some room to run if Sanders made a better throw. Brings up third and seven. Colorado State has got to get off the field on one of these third downs. It looks like they're playing zone coverage again. Let's see if they try to heat Shador Sanders up here once. Sanders, and the throw is caught right at the stick by Travis Hunter. We'll see where they mark him. It's a first down. Wow. They only rushed four. Sanders knows where he wants to go with the football. It's number 12. Pretty decent coverage, actually, there by Jones. Right side of your screen just gave a little bit too much ground. You got to be tighter to the inside receiver there. You know he's just going to run a quick stop route like that at the sticks. Into Colorado State territory at the 48, a gust of in motion. Sanders again to the air, fires, tight window, caught, Will Shepard, 43-yard line. I bring some pressure, Rich. I, I know Sanders is pretty good against the blitz. 
He's smart. He sees it. He gets the ball out quick, but he's in too much of a rhythm right now on these intermediate passes. Freddie Banks needs to bring the heat. No sacks, and that's a headline for Colorado's offensive line, and that's one of the reasons Sanders has been picking Colorado State apart. That's a loss of a yard, and will bring up another third down and six. Another opportunity for Colorado State defensive coordinator Freddie Banks to get off the field, although this could very easily be four down territory for the Buffs, depending on what happens here. Still looking like zone coverage. Four men come, Sanders' little dump off, and it's incomplete. It was broken up, so it's fourth down and six. And he threw that behind Wester. Wester's going to come from the left side of your screen. Sanders steps up. He's open. Shador Sanders throws it behind him to Wester. Still wouldn't have gotten the first down, but might have given Deion Sanders something to think about. Instead, he's going to punt it away. Looks like Colorado State got to stop. Bassett's punt to the sideline. And it's out of bounds. It was LaVon Brown trying to haul it in. Colorado State night. He usually is. On offense, he's had a very solid evening so far. Sure, Sanders knows where to get him the ball and what he can do after he gets it. And in defense, he's made a couple of really nice plays when they tried him deep. And on the third down to Horton. Just another day at the office for Travis Hunter. All right. Two plays off. So, so far this season, 325 snaps. He's missed only 13. It is just remarkable. Justin Marshall, who left the game in the first half, is back in at tailback. And this is Marshall, and he's hit hard at the three and back to the four. It's a gain of a couple. That's a, it's just incredible. I mean, it, like nobody has played at this level this many snaps as a two-way player. No, and I mean, I, my former teammate, Champ Bailey, dabbled on the offensive side a little bit. Charles Woodson, of course, won the Heisman, dabbling on the offensive side. There's no dabbling. I mean, he's got nine catches, 66 yards. He is a full-time player both sides. Just think about how many meetings he has to go to during the week. Play action. Fowler Nicolosi scrambling again, stopping, firing. Oh, and a coverage! And it's picked off! Preston Hodge of Colorado! Disaster for the Rams. These are the type of decisions Fowler Nicolosi made at times last year. The coaching staff thought his experience would get him past doing stuff like this, but you just cannot make this throw really ever, but especially backed up. That is an easy interception. The Rams finally get a stop and have a chance to try to make it a one-score game, and you can see Fowler Nicolosi. He knew it right away and is so so angry with himself there were a lot of turnovers in that wild double overtime Colorado win last year that's the first one for either team here and Hodge with a terrific play on the ball gotta hold him to a field goal here if you're Colorado State timeout Colorado State their first of the half full time out on the field correction Colorado it's a Colorado timeout Back after one of the best sluggers in the game. And that's what this guy is, a unicorn. For the 13, Sanders, nice touch, caught there. Wester is knocked out of bounds. Right at the one and a half yard line. Another open receiver. Let's see where this ball comes out. 
at the tail end. Ooh. If it's over the pylon, it's a touchback, but from that angle. It looked like it went out of bounds. I think that's the right call, that it went out of bounds as opposed to over the pylon for a touchback. And his foot, I believe, was on the line before that ball released. Touchdown, Travis Hunter. I think, Rich, too many people might have buried the Buffaloes prematurely after that loss last week to Nebraska. Just an in-breaking route from Hunter. Shador Sanders puts it high. Hunter so tough to cover man-to-man. -man. The Rams elected to go man-to-man -man there, and you can see right there why it doesn't really work when you're trying to cover Travis Hunter and some of these Buffs receivers. Boy, it sure works when Shador Sanders isn't on his back. When he has time, he will pick you apart. And he has done that tonight. 25 of the next off offensive or defensive coordinator, whoever's next, quickly goes to him right away. <laughs> it's like, okay, now here's what we're going to run. Get yourself ready and get back on that field. And there's flags down that come flying in after the return. See, he's, he's come right back out. The first guy that greeted him when he came off the sideline with that touchdown was the defensive coordinator, Robert Livingston. During the return, holding, receiving team number 13. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first down Colorado State. We got Travis Hunter and his last four games, if you want to stretch it all the way back. Already has 10 catches, well on his way to over 100 yards yet again. It's really, really, I mean, I know we're talking about it a lot, but we've never seen anything like this before. And if you're Colorado State, there is a lot of time left in this game, almost an entire half. They just need to get some type of positive momentum. Marshall with the carry. And for more on Travis Hunter, let's check in with Tiffany Blackman. Yeah, guys, what did defensive coordinator Rob Livingston tell us? He said, I couldn't stress this enough about Travis. Beyond what he does on the field, he talks about him as a person. And just that he's humble and happy-go-lucky. He said he's as special as an individual as you're going to find. So he's really the total package, it seems, guys. Thank you, Tiffany. And one of the things they've had to figure out is how are you going to make him last a full season playing just about every snap of every game. That's not an easy equation, obviously. Fowler Nicolosi with a throw, and it's caught there. Jamari Person with the catch, and Person is out to the 28-yard line. D.J. McKinney made the stop. 13 yards and a positive play for Colorado State. Torrey Horton was out on the field for one snap of that first drive, but he is on the sideline here. It feels like he's re-aggravated that groin injury. That's a huge loss if he can't come back into this football game. Quick toss, Marshall on the right side, and Marshall has a seam. Marshall across midfield. Carter Stoutmeyer made the stop for Colorado, and Colorado State's on the move. And it's because they got some good blocks down the field there on the flank. Watch Karras get out there. 78, the right tackle, and 10 to the right side, Vince Brown, the tight end. Both of those guys got excellent blocks downfield. And Colorado State feel that they finally have a little something going. Winfield in motion, and the throw is over. Winfield's head. See the total yardage. Good start by Colorado State, but Colorado has dominated since. Well, and the, the real issue now, being down 21-3, is I think Colorado State wanted to stay balanced. They wanted to run it. The relative weakness for Colorado's defense is their run defense. Their secondary is excellent. So Colorado State really wanted to come out and try to run the ball. I don't know how much of that we'll see, although there is still plenty of time. 
Fowler Nicolosi, little pump fake, and again, Marshall out of the backfield, but this time, he's caught and dropped by Nakai Hill Green. Feels like Marshall is the Rams' best weapon with no Horton, right? I mean, he's the guy that shows some explosiveness and can really make some plays, which is why they're featuring him smartly, although he's got to come off now on a critical third and four. You have to assume, in my mind, this is four-down territory for the Rams at this point in the field. Fowler Nicolosi escapes, waits, fires, out of bounds. And let's see if it is, in fact, four down territory on fourth and four. I think it has to be. I mean, they haven't really shown the ability to stop them on the last few drives. Colorado State just 65 yards rushing. No Horton. No Marshall. So the two best offensive skill position players for the Rams are not out there. Be alert for Fowler Nicolosi's legs. He might have to use them. Got to get to the 39 for a first down. Winfield in motion. Let's see the pressure they bring. It's a four-man rush. The throw caught. It's Winfield. And he holds on, and he just has the first down. Preston Hodge on the coverage. Boy, did they need that. From Armani Wingfield, this is not a good throw from Fowler Nicolosi, but Wingfield stops, jumps up, and is able to get the first down and make a play for his passer. Keegan Hollis is the running back. Fowler Nicolosi, a little inside screen, and that was blown up early. And that was DJ McKinney, a guy that his entire coaching staff feels is going to play on Sundays. Well, that was the perfect play call by the Rams. They had a tunnel screen called to the left. The Buffs brought a blitz. It was perfectly set up, but McKinney ruined it. Watch. They got the whole offensive line coming out. If Person gets a better block on McKinney right there, that might have been a touchdown. Person in motion. Second and ten. Fowler Nicolosi over the middle, caught, and it was Person who was hit by Hodge, short of the first down, another third down in about five. And still likely four down territory for the Rams. Person goes in every quarterback meeting. So even when the quarterbacks have extra meetings, he goes in because a lot of reasons, right? You want to be around the quarterbacks as much as possible, but he wants to know what they're thinking, what they're looking at. Colorado doesn't have the right grouping on the field. Time out, Colorado. It's their second time out of the half. Full time out on the Third field. Third down six, Colorado State trying to dig out of a 21-3 hole. Big sequence when we get back on Paramount Plus. I think Colorado's going to bring pressure here. Look at the bottom. They're man-to-man -man across the board with a single high safety. That would indicate pressure. Fowler Nicolosi has got to get it out. Justin Marshall's back in the game, and this is Marshall on the carry, breaks the tackle, bounces off another Buffalo, and is really close to the first down. Boy, that's an interesting play call with man-to-man -man coverage against the blitz like that brings up fourth and very short obviously Colorado State will go for it here I'd like to see some kind of under center run from Colorado State because there's just not that big of a menu of runs when you're out of the gun so often it's just inside zone away from where the back is standing direct snap here fourth and less than a yard and that's Marshall in the wildcat Excuse me, that's Avery Morrow, and Morrow's got the first down. I like that, a little change up. The reason why you do a direct snap is because you get an extra blocker. Brown gets a block. Montini, 44, gets a block. And the Rams finally, again, getting close down to the red zone. Nice play call there on fourth and short. Again, it's man-to-man -man coverage across the board with a single high safety in the middle of the field. The receivers have to win. 
Fowler Nicolosi, quick throw, caught there. That's Vince Brown, the tight end, his first catch of the ball game. He's a big, long guy, 6'6", 230. Nice protection by the big guys up front. Brown just runs a quick out route. He's got a win, right? He's working against an inside linebacker, off the ball linebacker. That is not Hill Green's forte. He is a downhill thumper. That's a matchup Colorado State needs to keep looking at if the Buffs are gonna play it this way. Second down four. Marshall, nowhere to go. Dayon Hayes, the sophomore, the transfer from Pitt. And a loss of four, and a loss of a shoe. Left guard Alex Foster. Alex Foster on his way to the sideline. Colorado State is driving impressively without their best player. Torrey Horton has not been on the field for this drive. Watch Foster. Let's see what happens to him. He's going to pull, and the linebacker comes downhill, and then he runs into Dayon Hayes. Dayon Hayes does an excellent job setting the edge there. One of the things the Colorado coaches like about him. And Foster had that arm hanging. It's a long drive. And they're faced now with a third down. And about six. 13 plays, 64 yards. Sophomore quarterback, Braden Fowler Nicolosi. Colorado showing pressure. Here they come. Fowler Nicolosi back foot throw, and it's incomplete. Jamari Person. And it was Preston Hodge in coverage. CSU's got to make some more plays against man to man coverage. Colorado brings the heat. Fowler Nicolosi throws it to the right guy, but just too far. He got, it's man-to-man -man coverage. You have to give your guy a chance to make a play on the football. This brings up an interesting decision here for CSU because a field goal would make it a two-score game. It would go from down 18 to down 15. They're going to go. To the two on fourth down. They need six. Blitz comes. Fowler Nicolosi throws. Back. Person. To the four. Nineteen yards. Travis Hunter's complaining. He thought it was a push off. Let's look at a different angle here as Colorado State's on the ball. I don't know. They got tangled up. I think it's a good no call there. Keegan Hollis, oh the ball's God. loose. The ball is loose. Bentley is on it. Oh, my goodness. All those plays, all those yards. And they cough it up on the doorstep. You have got to be kidding me. I am feeling that guy's pain right there and that guy as well. Sometimes it's just not your night. What a terrific job by the linebacker, Levante Bentley. The handoff to Hollis. Now watch Bentley 20 come in, rip it out of there, and then recover it. That is just an awesome play by Bentley. And obviously for Colorado State, the exact last thing you could have happen in that situation. Forced fumble and a recovery all in one swipe. Red zone takeaways, something that... Colorado is very good at and for Colorado State they're the complete opposite they last year struggled to hold on to the ball in the red zone Augusta trying to get outside Jack Howell sends him out of bounds after a gain of about four I'm curious rich to see how Colorado plays this the rest of the game do they trust the O-line do they run the ball a lot to keep the clock going like a lot of teams would do or
they keep throwing it to try to put up more numbers for Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter, and the guys. Hunter, 10 catches, 68 yards. Little dump off, and that's the tight end, Savelle Smalls. He's out to the 24-yard line. That's a first down, 13-yard gain. Smalls almost never gets the ball. It was a late dump off. I don't know where number eight, Boom Jock, for Colorado State's going. He's running away from the guy with the football. Smalls was actually a five-star edge rusher recruit coming out of high school in Colorado this offseason converted in the tight end started his career at Washington Seattle native Sanders Knight you can see three touchdowns no picks Augusta not a huge ground game but just enough to give you hope that the Buffaloes can build on it I mean, you look at those top four guys, Hunter, Shepard, Wester, Horn Jr., they are all great. We talked about, are they the best foursome in college football? Now, Oregon's got four pretty good ones, and Tez Johnson and Evan Stewart at the top of that group. But, man, the, those are all guys that, that are big-time receivers. Sanders, Augusta. He's got a nice game. Oh, and he lost the ball. Who's got it? Colorado State says they've got it. Officials, no signal yet. Colorado State forces a turnover. Chase Wilson at the bottom of the pile. And they're still hoping for Collins. It was a well-designed play by the Buffs. Let's see the ball come out. Yeah. Yeah, I think they've knocked that ball out. Boom jock. Watch them rate. Boom jock. Let's see if anything was down before he punched the previous it out. play of a fumble recovered by the defense is under review. That is a fumble. I didn't see anything else touch the ground. It was a good wrestling match for the ball on the ground, but that was a terrific play by Boom Jock. There was no knee down, no shin, no elbow, no forearm. This should be Rams ball. It was Chase Wilson at the bottom of the pile who emerged with the ball. And you would guess that this one won't take a lot of time. Watch Boom Jock, left hand, knock it out. Tough to see from that angle. It's the other angle that's really the money angle where you can clearly see Jock knock it out before anything's down from Augustive. See, nothing's down. The ball's out. The hand is not down. If it was a forearm, then he'd be down. Yep. Boy, that is huge for CSU. Well, this is the best angle. Watch. Nothing is down. The right hand is down, but that doesn't mean he's down. And then Jock knocks around with his left hand. Gene Steratore, chime in on this one. Yeah, guys, you hit the nail on the head. Augustus keeps himself off the ground with the left hand, posting himself up to get extra yardage, but it also doesn't put him down by contact. And we can clearly see that the ball's knocked loose right at that time. So I think it's a pretty easy review and a, and a, and a clear fumble. Gene, it feels like, as we take a look at it again, in this rivalry game, which is so heated. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's a first down, Colorado State. That the officials have kept this game under control so far. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree, Rich. And you know, you know, going into a game like this, big rivalry intensity, a lot of uh, bullet and board material, as we've all said and saw and set the show up with. But it seems as if the officials have closed in, communicated with the sidelines, the players, and, and to the team's uh, credit as well, it seems like they're keeping the intensity during the plays and not having a lot of extracurricular activity, which is great for the game. A lot of times, Rich, after a sudden change, teams like to take a shot, maybe a play-action pass and go deep for the Rams. Vince Brown, the tight end, in the slot high. There's movement on both sides. And I think this whistle's going against Colorado State. Before the snap, false start. Offense number 74, five-yard penalty, remains first down. 
That's Tanner Merely. He's the one that came in for Alex Foster. Take a look at the left guard. I think Vince Brown, the tight end, might have moved too. You know, but see, Morley there moved when the defense moved. And if they were in the neutral zone, then that should be on the D tackle. Tafik Thomas. Marshall the tailback, first and 15. That's Winfield in motion. A little face mask there. Yeah, they look like a, a face mask, and the Colorado State sideline is pretty vocal about it, but no flag. So that face mask there was not a long time, right? It was a slight grab, but that was somewhat similar to the face mask they called on James Mitchell earlier in the game. Watch, right here, Thomas reaches it out, grabs it, turns his head, I mean, it wasn't much of one, but he definitely grasped it for a little bit. Avery Morrow in the backfield. It's a gain of three, second and 12. Fowler Nicolosi. Boy, in traffic. Winfields and McKinney and a few other folk. And it's third down and 12. Rams are struggling to get open. Watch the receivers here. Again, it's just straight man-to-man -man coverage. I think they thought Winfield right there. Nice job passing that off by Colorado. It's man-to-man -man coverage, but they passed off so that they were right there. There was nowhere to go for Fowler Nicolosi. It's third down and 12. Remember, Colorado State's three of three on fourth down if they pick up six, seven yards here. Blitz comes. Fowler Nicolosi rolling. Looking, throwing, and it's incomplete on the sideline. Now, this is a really ambitious fourth down. This would be fourth and 13 or fourth and 12. I'm not sure why Fowler Nicolosi let watch the pocket. He's got time. The guys up front are doing the Why did he leave? He unnecessarily left the pocket and kind of put himself in a situation where that was the only throw he could make. And I know that drives offensive linemen like you nuts. A, a thousand percent. Usually, the best part of the pocket is if you step up. Fourth and 12, they're going for it. Jay Norvell's not messing around. Marshall in the backfield. Fowler Nicolosi has time, steps through the pocket. Throwing on the run, and it's picked off! And that's Hunter! Travis Hunter up the right side! Hunter inside the 45! The two-time All-American, Travis Hunter. Flags down for the celebration. Frustration for Braden Fowler Nicolosi. I mean, who else would get that interception but Travis Hunter? Fowler Nicolosi did a nice job. Again, the offensive line, pretty good. He steps up, bought himself some time, wasn't going to be able to run, and Hunter's just, I mean, Hunter's running that route like a receiver. Rolling on the field is an interception returned by the defense after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 12, 7, 99, and 23. <laughs> it's a 15-yard penalty tied to the end of the run. That's the first penalty towards disqualification for all players. First down, Colorado. So, watch, I mean, what, first of all, he's running that route better than the receiver is, which you would expect since he's also one of the best receivers. And watch all these guys. So I love that the, the, the officials that threw the flag, they made a point to write down all the guys' names so they could call them all out publicly. When's the last time you heard that? They, they four different numbers for guys on a celebration penalty like that. And Hunter on that return of 38 yards is, looks like he's going to get this snap off. I think he earned it after that long return. Third turnover for Colorado State. Colorado should run it here to be able to take it to the end of the quarter. Nope. Sanders loads up. There's a lot of early contact there, but no flag. So it's a little thing, but you have a three-score lead. 
if you run the ball there or even throw a safe pass, you get to the end of the quarter, right? Which is what you want. The clock is your friend. You want to keep that thing spinning. Second and ten. Sanders, little pivot there. Hunter's back in the game, and he makes the catch, and he's out of bounds. To keep him... Ooh, ooh. It's a flying headset. To keep him fresh, he gets three days off during the week. They literally shut him down for three days. He goes to meetings, gets his body right, gets set to go on to the fourth quarter. Moments ago, Tiffany Blackman and Deion Sanders. Coach Travis Hunter can do it all. What kind of spark did you just give this team with that interception? It's unbelievable. What, what about his defense? What about his offensive line and protecting the quarterback and the running game that uh, is vacant? I'm so darn proud of these young men. I don't know what to do. I want to just line them up and kiss all of them. I love them. I love them to life. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, and God bless. Yeah, he's been everywhere, as he usually is. I like... Deion Sanders, though, giving love to the rest of the defense and the O-line there. Third down nine. Shadur Sanders. Michael Welch. Flag is down. Welch did not get the first down. A hat is thrown. Well, it, it, it was a hold at the point of attack. And you may have a late hit. It's been a long night for Colorado State. Penalties, turnovers. So when a, a, when a ref has a hat off, that usually means they've thrown two flags. They only give him one flag. Maybe they should give him two. But he threw a flag, and then the hat is either a receiver going out of bounds, or in that case, has to be a second penalty in the same play. Worth there are two fouls on the play. Through the run, holding offense number five. It'll be 10 yards from the previous spot. After the play, personal foul, defense number 33. 30, correction, number 30. 15 yards, automatic first down. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the that, that is the killer. First, you'll see the hold by Horn. I mean, this is... This is just not Colorado State's night. Watch 30 Chase Wilson. That's a late, late hit. Yeah, he was way out. It's very unnecessary. Knocked over a trainer on the sideline, hit him in the back with his helmet. That is not a smart play by a smart player, and the automatic first down is just killer. The Rams are absolutely killing themselves in this game. Rich, they are not giving themselves a chance to win the ball game. And it's Colorado who has played with poise. You're right. I haven't really turned it over. I haven't had stupid penalties like that one. Well, they did have the celebration where four got flagged. That was more fun than stupid, I'd say. <laughs> Caught there by Will Shepard along the sideline. That's a really nice throw by Shadur Sanders. Got it up and over a defender and found Shepard on the sideline. 22 yards on the completion. I mean, those that is a great graphic. Three points allowed. They averaged 35 points per game allowed last year. Zero sacks. They allowed six last week. 81 rushing yards. There's a pretty good chance they'll go over 100, which they almost never do. Play action. Shepard again. And he dives looking for extra yardage. Will Shepard, a 6-3 target, transfer from Vandy. And that's why I'm so impressed by Colorado's receiving core. They're number three and number four receivers. Shepard from Vanderbilt and Wester from FAU. Those guys were record-setting receivers at their prior schools. Now they're the number three and four receivers here for the Buffs. Second and four, Sanders again, fires, end zone, Hunter caught it! Touchdown, 22 yards! If you 
can play like number 12 does, you can certainly do your dance. This is a beautiful throw by Sanders against that zone coverage in the corner of the end zone. They have found that spot in between the corner and the safety a lot tonight, and it has been all buffs since the first quarter. Hunter's position on the depth chart on offense and defense is not wide receiver and corner, it's athlete. Extra point up and good. Boy, it was bouncing here early, and Colorado State had a 3-0 lead, and it's been all Buffalo since. Travis Hunter's been unbelievable both sides of the ball, has a pick and a long return, and Shadur Sanders has had time, and he's been money. 32 of 42, four touchdowns, 279 yards. Torrey Horton played in the first half, seemed to re-injure. He was nursing a, a groin injury. Return for just one play in the second half. Of course, Horton had 16 catches in the game last year. So Colorado State led the Mountain West Conference in passing yards and passing yards per game last year. So they have it in them to put up a lot of yards through the air, but they had that guy catching 96 passes for 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns receiving last year. I highly doubt we'll see him back in the game. At this point now, the Rams are hoping he can get healthy, I would imagine, for the Mountain West slate. Colorado State has actually moved the football in the second half. That's it. Difficult catch, Jamari Person with Preston Hodge on the coverage. Don't forget later in the game, it's the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike's sub. Colorado State going with the no huddle as they need to, up tempo, down four scores. Fowler Nicolosi. Out of bounds. Now you talked about the, the yardage last year. The one thing they wanted to clean up this year were the interceptions. Last year, 16 picks from Fowler Nicolosi's thrown two tonight. And both of them, I mean, the second one was a fourth down, so he had to at least throw it to somebody. But the first one, deep in his own end zone, or at least his own territory, was devastating. And, and look at... Look at Colorado, they're still playing man-to-man -man with a single high safety. People don't do this in the fourth quarter when they're up by four scores. Low snap. Braden Nicolosi in trouble. Escapes. Squares up. Fires. Nice throw there. Caught by Goody. Goody wrestles his way out close to the first down. I think he's short by a yard. Bauer Nicolosi has to be tired. I mean, he's running all over the place to the right sideline to the left sideline, brings up a fourth down, and very short, Colorado State has to go for it. Obviously, earlier in the game, in this situation, they went with a direct snap situation. Here it comes again, but they get the two extra blockers right there. Yeah, Keegan Shank is number 90, is one of those blockers. And Morrow looks for a seam, and he finds the seam! And every Morrow to the 30! They will catch him and drop him at the three. And guess who caught him? Hunter runs him down. I love that scheme. Everybody thought it would be to the right. Instead, he cut it back to the left. Watch Hunter's speed here, by the way. I mean, he's got him by five yards, and Hunter hawks him down in, what, 15, 20 yards? Tries to punch the ball out, but that was such a good scheme by the Rams and so well blocked. Marshall probably would have taken that into the for a touchdown. 62 yards, Hunter comes out for this snap. Ooh, Marshall. Oh, goodness. How many times have we seen Nakai Hill Green lower the boom? Oh, my goodness. I love Nakai Hill Green. The Pittsburgh native.
just explode. Ooh, Hunter's reaching for his right arm there, his right shoulder. He's getting looked at. He's holding the right shoulder. Second and goal. Changing the play again. Last week it was to a run most of the time. Just gets the play off. And Marshall is in. Touchdown, Colorado State. was slanting to that side. It was the perfect play call. And the Rams are gonna go for two here. That's the right decision to try to make it a 17 point game. So they could theoretically tie it with two touchdowns and a field goal. Marshall in the backfield. Six plays, 75 yards for the touchdown. This for two. Fowler Nicolosi sets, throws. Complete. Person looked like he had it, and when he got into the end zone, the ball rolled away. You liked? Now would be a good time to use it because the Buffs do not have their hands team out there. Travis Hunter actually is on the hands team, by the way, and will be interested to see if he comes out. Remember, they were looking at that right shoulder after the tackle, and right now he's on the bench. Let's check in with Tiffany Blackman. Yeah, guys, right now he's back with the defense. But when he came off the field, I watched one of the athletic trainers kind of grab the top of his head while he was sitting down and bend it side to side. Seems to be like testing out the, the neck area, guys. But once he got up, he was all smiles. So looks like he'll be good to go. All right, thank you, Tiff. Little adjustment, maybe. Be interesting to see if they run it or throw it. Let's keep it on the ground. Let's watch that long play. Remember, he had to chase down Morrow, tried to strip, then draped across his back. Not really sure what could have happened there other than he landed hard on his left shoulder. See if we see him back in this game on either side of the ball. Second and eight. Sanders to throw on target there. It's caught by Terrell Timmons, the transfer from North Carolina State. Of course, Hunter's not in the game, so they throw the ball to their fifth receiver, the guy that's in there in place of them, and they get a first down through the air. Colorado State, I think, needs to get more aggressive defensively try to force a turnover, try to get some pressure on Shador Sanders. Okay, that's just telling one side of the story there, right? That return on the interception was like 38 yards. He's had quite a night. So has Sanders. And on target again, LaJunte Wester. Wester made the, the decision to come here despite knowing that Horn was here and Hunter was here and Shepard was here. And we asked him why. He said, I wanted NFL caliber instruction. And he knew that that was kind of the makeup of this Colorado staff. He knew he wouldn't get the ball as much as he did at, as, at FAU, but he wanted to be around other like-minded guys that were trying to make the NFL. Colorado's doing a nice job here, by the way, Rich, letting the play clock down. They should not snap until there's less than five seconds left. There's no reason to. This is smart. This is good. Four-man rush. Sanders out of the flat. Michael Welch is hit by Owen Long. So, you know, Colorado has had at times some questionable clock management and decisions the last couple of years, but even though they're still throwing it tonight, you see the numbers for Shador Sanders. The key, of course, being the four touchdowns, no interceptions. They're doing the right thing. He should take it inside the five. That was too early. Play action. 
flag down, and he slides down. If you slide as a quarterback behind the line of scrimmage, is that a sack? Yes. Who gets credit for it? I think they call it to the team. It's a team sack. <laughs> Defensive linemen never really like that one. Holding. Offense number 58. Penalties declined. Third down. Yeah, you, you don't want to take more time off the clock, so you're going to decline the penalty and get it to third down. Yeah, Zelinskis is from Denver. Got his first start as a true freshman last year in this game at 18 years old. He said he got texts from everybody he knew. He was telling me in, in, in elementary school, the gym teacher used to put a big poster up. One side said Buffs, the other side said Rams, and every kid had to write their name. Whichever team lost, you had to do 10 push-ups on Monday. They're down, 13. Here comes the heat. Sanders throws deep. That is Horn. And he makes the catch. The official, there's a flag down. The official on the sideline ran into a photographer. Holding, offense number 54. 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. And it's all coming back. Boy, that is gigantic. Shador Sanders made that throw while it watched Houston working against Kershke, the right tackle. Let's see what happens. He's laid off the ball. Kershke comes with the rip. Oh, that's not a hold. I, I, I don't like that holding call at all. It was a rip, and then he moved the ball. But watch Sanders deliver this football as he's getting smashed. He is a courageous guy in terms of stepping into throws while he's about to get hit. And that would have been a huge completion for the Buffs. But Deion Sanders does not like it. So another penalty further back, third and 23. And Colorado will keep it on the ground. And that's a nice game there by Isaiah Augusta. He's added a nice spark to this run game. But of course, you got to give a lot of credit to Pat Shermer. And the offensive line, they worked uh, all week. I was at practice the day after you were in Boulder, and same stuff, just drilling that offensive line. And it's paid off. I don't know why Colorado State's late getting guys off the field. It seems like one of them was talking trash to Shador Sanders. Probably not the best time for that. Levon Brown is deep. And he's going to return it. Flag down. Return is to the 11. 551 left, 28 9, Colorado on top of Colorado State. A lot of penalties in this game. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number one, half the distance to the goal, first down Colorado State, timeout on the field. It's the 19th penalty combined. The ninth on Colorado State. Deion Sanders and the Buffs have taken the crowd out of it. All right, Adam, thank you. 2009, the last time Kentucky beat Georgia and yeah Mike Bobo had the a run here helped open up this stadium was the head coach at Colorado State pass over the middle is caught there by Vince Brown Jim McElwain of course was an offensive coordinator in Alabama head coach at Florida he's the the most recent coach to have success here in Fort Collins Another penalty. This is the 20th penalty in this game. It's a face mask from Cameron Silman Craig, the safety. Holding. Defense number seven. Ten yard penalty added from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Oh, I'm sorry. Correction. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. I thought, wow, did he hold him before that? Because it was definitely a face mask right there. He yanks it all the way around. 
Cameron Silva, Silman Craig, they say, is the heart and soul of the defense, and the D coordinator, Livingston, believes he will be a pro. Look at that, 20 penalties, and there's still over five minutes to go. That's not good football. Seven of the penalties have resulted in a first down. Fowler Nicolosi. And it's broken up. And it was Person. And Carter Stoutmeyer getting his first start. We talked about it at the outset of the show. They trust him. He played pretty well in the second half against Nebraska after Shiloh Sanders got hurt. Now Colorado's having some too deep coverage. They've got two deep safeties now. They're not going to let you beat them over the top. Scrambling. Nice job to keep the feet in by Dylan Goffney, the senior out of Cypress, Texas. Seven yards, but still short of the first down. Bring up a third down and a long three. And yeah, Travis Hunter's back out there. Well, that's a good sign. Four-man rush, crossing pattern, broken up. That was Preston Hodge, flagged down. Hodge is the nickelback, so he's usually working against that slot receiver. Pass interference, defense number 24. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. It's an automatic first down. Let's take a look at it. Number 24, Hodge, right in the middle of your screen. It's an in-breaking route. Kind of hooked him a little bit there. You know, they were letting him play a little bit more earlier in the game. So I, I, I like when officials are consistent, but they elected to call that one. Tyler Nicolosi, that went right through the hands of Caleb Goody. Hodge was there on that coverage. That penalty has been one of their best plays. That's unbelievable. And yet they still only have nine points. They haven't been able to turn it in to enough points, getting five different penalties, or five different first downs, I should say, by a penalty. Five receivers, five minutes left. 28-9 Colorado. Tyler Nicolosi again scrambling. A little backhand shovel. Smart play by him. Don't get any loss of yardage and stop the clock. Out of the uh, tackle box. That's a smart yep. play. Very smart play by Fowler Nicolosi. Once you're outside that tackle box, as long as you get a pass line of scrimmage, you can do that. They got two downs to get 10 yards to have any life left in this game. They got pressure coming. Quick throw. Caught there. That's Goffney trying to get to the sideline. He does. And knocked out of bounds by DJ McKinney. Not DJ Fedora. <laughs> Just an in-breaking route from Goffney out of the slot. What I like about that, that is the run after catch. Colorado State needs to remain in a hurry and try to get the ball downfield a little bit more if they can. 22-yard gain. Fowler Nicolosi flushed, looking, wants his receiver to come back. They don't, and he's out of bounds. You know, that's one thing that Colorado's receivers do really well, and that is when Sanders is able to extend the play. We talked to the defensive coordinator of Colorado State, Freddie Banks. He said, man, Colorado's receivers are really good at coming back to help the quarterback. Colorado State did not do that for Fowler Nicolosi. That Centennial Cup has been residing in Boulder for some time. Again, scrambling. This time he's dropped. Dayon Hayes gets the sack. Just holding it. Somewhat downhill from there. Turnovers are the biggest stat there at the bottom. A differentiating factor in this game. Fowler Nicolosi might even get another one because he's going to have to drive the ball down the field at some point. Third and 11. 
in stride, hits his man. Caught there. And that's Dane Olson, his first time in the ball game, a 16-yard pickup. Three thirty, clock moving. Tyler Nicolosi on the mark there. And because he was going backwards when he went out of bounds, the clock keeps going. That was Person with the catch. So they need to hurry up because the clock keeps spinning if you're if you lost forward progress as you're going out of bounds. Uh oh, another bad snap. And what looks like another turnover. B.J. Green has the football, and it's been that kind of night in Fort Collins. I don't know how this happens twice with a veteran center and quarterback. That time, Fowler Nicolosi, number one, wasn't ready for it. Number two, it was at his ankle. That is a double whammy right there from Jacob Gardner and a fitting way for potentially Colorado State's last possession to end. You would expect Colorado to just run the ball here as some of the CSU students run out of the building. Wow. Sanders going to throw the ball. Fires it up the sideline, and it's incomplete, and there's flags down. Are you surprised they're throwing it? I am, and I'm not, Rich. I, I am surprised because it's not what most teams would do in this situation. Pass interference, defense number one. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. So my question now, and they got Asisima covering Hunter one-on-one. -on -one. Actually, really good coverage. Till right then, even that one, I wouldn't have minded if they let that one go, if you're going to let the guys play. So my question is, with Colorado throwing it right now, would they be doing this anyway, or are they doing this because of the bad blood that exists between these two programs? Sanders, little swing pass. That's Charlie Offerdahl, and he's out to the 40. Well, look, for Colorado State, regardless of what's happening now, tonight's been a nightmare. Well, the roughing the passer led to a touchdown. The interception led to a touchdown. The fumble took probably a touchdown off the board. Then Hunter made a Travis Hunter play. I mean, look at that. Two interceptions, two fumbles. You said it, Rich. They were actually moving the football. All sits at the 40. Sanders fires, sideline, that's Travis Hunter with the catch, and Hunter's out to the 50. And we're approaching the two-minute timeout. Boom Jock made the stop. 10 yards on the throw and the catch. Time around to see which play was the Jersey Mike's play of the game. Jersey Mike subs. There's a lot to choose from, but this throw by Shadur Sanders and the catch by Travis Hunter, that's worthy of a Jersey Mike sub. Snap to Shadur, backpedals, sets, throws it downfield into the end zone, makes the grab high in the air. Did he hold on? Touchdown! Touchdown, Colorado! That ball was thrown beautifully. The second strike of the night from Shadur to Travis. A touchdown pass of 22. And the Buffaloes have broken the game open with 13-20 to play in the fourth quarter. And That's Offerdahl on the carry. And so Colorado comes out on a third and one, runs it, gets the first down to the 38. So they can now just take three knees in victory formation and end the game. Doesn't look like they're going to do that. I was about to say, I don't know that that's happening. They're going to give it to Offerdahl. 5'11", 185 pounds, straight ahead. Keeping it on the ground, though. Well, that's good, keeping it on the ground. But, you know, you don't want to take any chance, I would say, of a fumble or suffering an injury is probably the bigger thing, right? If you can take a knee, just take a knee. But that that is not... 
Colorado's philosophy. Play action. They take a shot. Wow. And it's incomplete. So if you remember against North Dakota State, they could have just run the clock out and instead they threw the ball. This was a couple games ago. There's a minute 41 and it's first and 10. Instead, they try to take a shot. And that gave North Dakota State a chance to throw a Hail Mary where they came up four yards short. They also snapped the ball with 11 seconds on the play clock on that last play. That is not smart. They're down in six, gonna throw it again. Sanders, fires sideline, it's broken up. Sisima on the coverage. So what do you make of this? I, I don't know what to, I, I gotta be honest with you. I think this has to be coming from Deion Sanders because I just can't imagine that this is what Pat Shermer would want to be doing in this situation. I mean, he's a three-time NFL head coach. I, I think Pat would just be taking a knee and winning the football game and not taking a chance that any offensive lineman gets hurt or that the quarterback gets hit again. Now they're going for it on fourth down. And Sanders in the pocket gets hit and it's incomplete. I mean, he just took another hit from a D tackle. This makes no sense. It's a long season. I mean, they've got Baylor next week. It's into the Big 12. They are fortunate that this wasn't a bigger hit. This is a 305 pound defensive tackle going right near his throwing arm. Can you imagine what we would be saying all week if Shador Sanders got his throwing arm hit in a game where they're up 19 with less than a minute left and they could have just taken a knee? I don't understand. I have not seen very many teams in my life in NFL or FBS football do that. It's a, it's a really interesting choice. I'm sure I would have heard it on the Ross Tucker podcast <laughs> <laughs> all week. Fowler Nicolosi to the sidelines, and that's Goffney with the catch clock stop. So, of course, now for both teams, it's into conference play for Colorado. And they get their first taste of the Big 12. They got Baylor at home, then on the road to Central Florida, Kansas State. They got Arizona on the schedule on the road, Cincinnati, go to Texas Tech, Utah at Kansas, and Oklahoma State. And of course, for Colorado State, They've got UTEP coming up and then a trip to Oregon State. Fowler Nicolosi goes down. Well, that's smart. For him to go down, you do not want to get injured here. Big 12 wide open is what we've seen today. And I think based on what we saw tonight, Rich, I think Colorado has a chance to make some noise. They have the talent. I just think they've had so many new faces and new players that it's going to take a little bit of time to put it together, and they put it together much better tonight. And I think that's really important for Deion Sanders and Colorado. They need to win. They need to win to validate all the noise. Their last two seasons in the Pac-12, they've been 2-16. and 16. Only one of those seasons, last season, was with this new coaching staff. But, yeah, I think they need to win some ball games. Right? Oh, no question. I mean, last year when adversity hit, things went south and they never got it back. That is a credit to Coach Sanders. Last week was not good against Nebraska at all. And you didn't know how they would handle the adversity this year. They responded in a major way. And the offensive line play is a huge, huge sign of improvement tonight. This Rocky Mountain Showdown lopsided after that first quarter. Colorado State had a 3-0 lead. Colorado got it in gear. Remember, they scored going in half, got the ball to start the second half. Fowler Nicolosi flushed, fires it down the sideline, and it's incomplete. And that's it. Game over. For Colorado, they've won seven straight in this rivalry game. 
28-9 is the final score. And a handshake there between Deion Sanders and Jay Norvell. Brief 